This is awesome. All right, so we are live. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining me today. This is my little, I guess you call it kind of like a podcast, like a vlog cast. I don't know what you call it, but it is basically a quick interview. I call it virtually connected. And because of everything that's just going on these days, um, everybody's kind of moving to virtual. And this is my way of introducing my community, my friends, my family, uh, the people I care the most about uh, to uh, wonderful professionals inside of the community who really just have a grasp on certain things and can add value. And I have always felt like you've been one of those people. You've just done such a great job. I mean, you've been in the business for now 14 years. Is that about right? That yes. Right? Thank years? you. Yes. Yeah. 14 years. Uh, you've been in the real estate industry. You're over at Windermere and Port Orchard. Excellent, excellent company. And um, I've always found it amazing how not only did you kind of navigate the turbulent times, the 2008s, all of those, but now in this time, uh, you're navigating this portion um, of, I guess, what you could call a little bit of a crisis time. <laughs> I mean, we're all kind of stuck at home, but you're doing that through education. For the last couple of years, you've ran a long-standing first-time homebuyer seminar uh, in Port Orchard at the Windermere office, and people have been going to it regularly every third Sunday, and you've been putting out such, such great content, helping people understand what it means to buy and sell real estate, what the expenses are, and that is just phenomenal. So I wanted to bring you on. We had a conversation the other day where you had talked about, hey, there might be some silver linings through this whole thing. Um, there might be some opportunities where we can help buyers have a competitive advantage in the market. And well, with that being said, uh, I'm going to kind of turn it over to you and some things you'd like to talk about. So all yours. Thank you, Sean. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and I just wanted to say that I've been working with Sean over the past 10 years, and I actually use him as my own personal lender as well. I think that alone speaks volume. So I trust him with my own financial needs. Um, and I'm excited to be here today and um, talk about the coronavirus and um, the market. So I think the most important thing for people to know that this is a health um, crisis, not a housing crisis. Um, and there's things that you can be doing right now at home to put yourself in a better position to be ready um, <clears throat> when the two weeks is over and to put you ahead of everybody else. So I'm gonna have Sean uh, pull up some screens that I wanted to share. Yeah. Could do that right now. Boom, there we go. Thank you, Sean. So this is just uh, Sean's information and mine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and skip to the next screen. And again, we just wanted to really say that the 2020 um, housing market is strong. It's stronger than ever. It's gonna continue to stay strong. I know there are some concerns with the coronavirus affecting the market, but that is not going to happen. Again, this is a health crisis. It is not a housing crisis. And we're gonna go over some things to kind of help you be ahead of the game. So on here, you can see um, from the Como News report that the COVID-19 outbreak um, has put a lot of people hold on life, uh, the restaurants, schools, entertainment facilities, and so forth. But according to the local real estate agents and experts, people are still buying and selling in what continues to be a strong housing market in Seattle and also Kitsap, Pierce County, and surrounding areas. And Jen, um, I know yeah. that we're in the Kitsap area, you know, I mean, we're in Silverdale, we're in Port Orchard, you know, and you help clients all over, but that really does have a, that has a trickle down effect to the Kitsap County area, right? Just because it's happening in Seattle 
doesn't mean that it's not happening in in Silverdale, in Bremerton, in Port Orchard, right? Correct. So everything here kind of starts off in Seattle and then it trickles usually to Pierce County and then Kitsap County. Um, we have seen that time and time again, even with uh, the home prices itself uh, continuing to be strong and go up. Um, a lot of people actually in Seattle area are moving over here to the Kitsap side with the fast ferry coming in. So it's really important if you are thinking about buying to not wait, do it now uh, before the fast ferry is in because home prices will continue to rise. Yeah, um, I mean, just looking at that bottom one where it's talking about how from the Puget Sound Business Journal, which is something amazing, I definitely subscribe to it. It's coronavirus not slowing down Seattle's supercharged uh, region housing market. So again, uh, it's just pointing those things out. And it's cool for everybody who's viewing this, we can share your links, right? And put it down there in case people want to read for themselves. Yeah, so again, at the bottom, it talks uh, Puget Sound Business Journal, coronavirus is not slowing down Seattle region. And also I've put in post on my own personal Facebook page um, that has come from Congress, the state, um, and housing um, specialists that again, this is a health virus. This is not a housing um, crisis. And this two week hold, if anything, I think it's gonna be supercharged. So when we are off a hold, there's going to be a lot of homes going on the market. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get into the next slide. So the affordability, I think this is huge. So in 2018, it was 30%, um, 2019, 40%. So I think this is very important to discuss that actually the affordability has gone up 10% this year. And some people might ask, how is that possible uh, with home prices continuing to rise? And um, we'll talk about that a little bit here. Um, despite the average home price increasing by nearly 13,000 uh, monthly mortgage payment um, required to buy that same house has actually dropped by 10% over that same span due to falling interest rates. And that's exactly what I was gonna say with interest rates being at historic lows as um, really driving buyers. Um, I don't think people realize what interest rates, how it affects so much buying power and how much more of a home you can buy. Like, I'm sure you can talk a little bit more about that, but every yeah. like half a point gives you another well, 45,000. 1% 1 in a change of interest rate. So just to explain to real, real briefly to everybody, because this is something that's near and dear to my heart, you know, being in the mortgage industry. Um, when it comes to interest rates and the impact that they have on buying real estate, I mean, for this year, you can really, really just uh, tee it up as real estate was on sale. So although the sticker price might be higher, the way that we typically operate on a day-to-day -day basis uh, as human beings is, you know, we base everything on our monthly payment on what the affordability is. And so if you hadn't, if you got pre-approved, for instance, at an interest rate of 4.5%, uh, Okay, and then just, of course, using round numbers, hypothetical situation, uh, the interest rates fell and it went down to three and a half percent. Well, if you were pre-approved at four and a half um, at four hundred and uh, at four hundred thousand dollars, even you can now effectively at three point five percent have the same principal and interest payment that you would on a four hundred thousand dollar house on a four hundred and forty thousand dollar house. Okay. And that's a huge difference that can get you another bedroom, another bathroom, a bigger yard, the things that are important to you. So looking at homes, you're going to see a significant difference in $50,000 and what it can get you. Yeah, think about what an impact that is. It's all right, I'm, I'm here. I got pre-approved for my house. I can buy a $400,000 house. Okay, interest rates drop. Now I have the same exact payment 
okay? But I have a $440,000 house. And I mean, if, if it's okay with you, I, I do wanna share uh, one thing that's going on uh, my screen right here. Let's see if I can just pull it up real fast. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. I believe this is it. And I'll go here. So this is what this looks like um, in Port Orchard. You know, we're using a service that uh, I subscribe to in Port Orchard. Just looking at that 98366 zip code, the median home price right now is $406,000. Okay, $406,000. Through <clears throat> and just taking a look at it, if that's the median home, that's your three bedroom, uh, two bathroom house, built in the 90s, you know, on a nice lot. Think about, you know, if you're getting 10% more of a house and then look at the appreciation. I mean, granted, there's gonna be some weird things that go on with the economy this year, but if you're looking at the appreciation, somebody who holds on to this house with our historic appreciation, okay? Her, our historic appreciation of 4.72%, not the crazy stuff that was going on the last five years of 8.71, but if you bought this $406,000 house today in five years, which is about the average you would keep your first home, correct? That's about the average, anywhere from three to seven years, so about five, right? You would end up making, what's that? $92,907 in equity. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I've actually had a lot of military call me uh, recently about selling their home and some of them only purchased their home three years ago. And after I do a comparable market analysis, I do a net proceeds for them and it shows them how much they're walking away with. And I can tell you almost all of them have been uh, netting about 100K after all fees. I mean, where else can you make that type of money in just three years? Doing yeah, nothing. I'm you're looking at that. I mean, even in year three, you're looking at, you know, a total gross um, equity gain of 64,060. 60, yeah. So right about $58,000. So again, huge, huge, huge benefit. I'm, I'm going to bring back up your slides. And for anybody that's watching, <clears throat> for anybody that's watching out there, if you're ever just curious about what the market's doing, uh, Jen is such an amazing expert uh, at the real estate game. So please contact her. If you want to take a look at more visuals and things like uh, what I just showed you uh, at no cost, just let me know, give me a zip code and I'll kind of tell you what the appreciation and the forecast looks like um, in that market. All right, let's bring up your screen. And we'll go back to that presentation mode. All right, so this, this kind of looks like what we were just talking about right yes. here. Um, yes. This one right there where it's talking about how, uh, well, I'll let you take it. <laughs> well, it was just kind of like what we were just talking about, how um, with the interest rates being at historic lows, it really does bump up um, your approval price and what you can get of, $48,000, $50,000 more home for the same exact payment. So like Sean was talking about, based off a $400,000 house, which is Port Orchard, Kitsap County's medium price, to a $450,000 house and having the exact same payment. That's huge. So... Um, <clears throat> And the thing that I wanted to talk about is especially right now, uh, timing is so important. It's the most important and putting yourself up for success. And there is things you could be doing right now to be ahead of the game, because I can tell you when this hold is off, you know, during springtime is when everybody puts their home on the market. And it's been a little pause because of the coronavirus, but I can tell you when this comes off, there's gonna be tons of homes coming on the market and buyers ready. So it's really important to know that right now <clears throat> that you can 
get pre-approved right now. And one of the things I wanted to talk about as far as being pre-approved is there's a pre-approval letter that just, or we call it pre-qual, where you call, they run your credit score, you tell them how much you make, and they say, okay, this is how much you can buy. And a pre-approval letter is it's already been through underwriting. They looked at all your financial paperwork and that you're a solid buyer. Because I can tell you what after this holds, when the houses come on the market, those who have already been pre-approved are going to have such a huge advantage. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to I know share the, that. I know at the beginning, um, or at least when you and I talked yesterday, we talked about how there are challenges and there's been some things that have come out in the news. And then let's go ahead and unpack what some of those challenges are. Um, that are going to be facing not just our clients, but everybody. Everybody is going to be facing very, very similar challenges. And you had some amazing points where you had talked about, okay, well, what things, what things our clients could do that would set them apart from other buyers? Because we're not only are we in this health crisis right now, we are arguably in one of the most competitive housing markets that we've ever seen, at least in our industry, at least that we've been in for how long we've been here for our career. I mean, every other day, you know, you put a listing on, um, they have that new clause that's in there where an offer review date. And then by the time you go ahead and you put your offer in, there's like 19 other offers that are going on. So what exactly um, are we facing with some of the news that's come out and how can we get those people there? So let's take a look uh, you had a couple of those items up. Uh, let's see, I'm going to share it back on the screen. It looks like you were talking about potential challenges. So, I mean, I think the first one we wanted to bring out were the health concerns because we all have people that are affected by this. And I, I would definitely say that's probably the biggest concern that we all have, right? Yeah. So again, stay home, be safe. And the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about is even us realtors, actually, after midnight tonight, we're not allowed to show homes. So you could have such an advantage. So a lot of those homes that are on the market right now, or they just listed their house on the market, cannot have showings for two weeks. That's huge. So you can take full advantage of that. We actually can still do uh, virtual tours. Um, we have so, 3D. So to unpack uh, that real quick. I, I don't want people to lose that because there's so many, so many conversations going on right now about what's essential, what should we do, when you should leave your house based on Governor Inslee's message. And I know the Northwest MLS, so the people who um, really govern all of the different real estate agents and the legal contracts and all of that stuff. They advised you guys of what yesterday? So yesterday I received an email. And so did every other licensed real estate agents mm -hmm. that we are not allowed to show homes, have open houses. And not only that, but all firms are being closed. So, so this is guys, very serious. If you're watching this video right now and you're at home, I want you to really think about the major impact that that makes. You know, all those open house signs that you see on the corner, the postings on Facebook, you know, and you think about how many real estate agents we all know personally um, as friends or colleagues, they've been told right now because of their safe and the health of everyone that's involved in the county or actually across the state now to shut down their offices okay, not hold open houses and um, not conduct any in-person showings, okay? So that is a challenge because if you are a seller and you have your house on the market, that foot traffic that you depend on, it's not gonna be there at least in person at this time. That right, Jen? That's correct. And I think it's actually going to be a huge buyer's advantage to take full advantage of the situation. Because another thing is sellers go by days on market and some of them just put their house on the market. So they're going to have two, three weeks 
time on market um, where most people have days because of all the showings and then it goes pending. So this is huge. And I think it's important to know that even though us agents have to work from home, we have access to the MLS. The multiple listing service is like Zillow on steroids. And it has, um, like for my listings, I always do virtual tour. It has photos. It has so much information. A lot of people don't know, but there's agent only information where only us agents can see it. And I mean, if we didn't have that, we probably wouldn't be in business. So we yeah, get so all the if, information. If you're talking about that and the challenges, and we just kind of go through all of these, if we're yes. looking at it, we have the health concerns, we have um, new homes not coming on the market or at, at least as many homes that are coming on the market, right? You That's have, correct. You have I mean, I actually home. just got a phone call yesterday, someone wanting to list their house. And I wanted right. to let you know, too, that photographers have actually been affected of this. Oh, wow. Photographers cannot go out and take photos, even if the home is vacant. Wow, I did not so, know. That's just another one of the byproducts of everything is, you know, those photographers, all those. I mean, what really sells a house? if you're just looking at if you're not there in person and it's the pictures you know i mean real estate agents I and mean, what do you think the average real estate agent spends on pictures when doing a home like um three to five hundred dollars minimum yeah and so photos. photographers they've been deeply affected by that so that's a that is one thing that i just didn't even think of so uh let's see on here you also have You also have, um, you know, the stay-at-home orders, so that affects foot traffic. Uh, real estate agents unable to show homes in person at time, and I think that just also goes to the creativity of the industry right now. Um, a lot of agents are doing what you just mentioned it. Uh, yeah. So the North Northwest MLS is actually something that only realtors have access to. Uh -huh. And it is like Zillow with steroids. So there's virtual tour on there. There's photos. There's all the information, the agent only information. So if you're a buyer out there, again, the first most important thing is getting pre-approved. I'm not talking about pre-qualified, but pre-approved. If you have not been pre-approved yet, you need to contact Sean immediately and get pre-approved because in this competitive market, if there's three or four offers and two are pre-quals and two are pre-approvals, the two pre-qual letters are just getting thrown out. So when seriously, you they're not even going to respond to that offer because when people have financing selling and took their house off the market for two weeks, that's huge. So it's very important, especially in this competitive market to get pre-approved right away. So if you have not done so yet, now is the time. And that is something you do not have to meet in person for. Now, um, so about, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, when you're talking about um, the Northwest MLS, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you talked about it being Zillow on steroids. I think it's important for everybody to know that um, kind of the, the life cycle of a listing when a real estate agent, if I'm, if I'm correct on this, so definitely correct me if I'm wrong, a real estate agent has a seller come to them and say, Hey, I want you to list my house. So then, but then the real estate agent, they enter that information into the Northwest MLS and their brokerages software, right? right. So if you work for Windermere, Windermere has their software, Northwest MLS has their software. Now there's rules, there's compliance, um, you have to have things up to date, et cetera. All of the information, beware, there's dogs, there's a homeowners association, everything that is there. Oh, that's the joys of working from home, see? <laughs> um, uh, everything that's in there, all of that content, all of that information has to be put in there, right? And then it gets right. updated to the Northwest MLS, and then there are certain fields that get populated on Zillow, Realtor.com, um, Redfin, all, all the major ones that people typically search on. Um, even Facebook now has some real estate ads. 
only some of the information from what you put in makes it to those other sources, correct? Correct. And it's not always um, based on, uh, it's not always up to date. Sometimes it can be a couple hour leg time. Sometimes right. it could be, you know, days. And then I think every homeowner has had that situation where they looked up their property on Zillow to see how much it's worth. And then there's all kinds of information that's not there. <laughs> It's not accurate, you know, um, maybe it was when they sold, maybe it's a number. So, I mean, Zillow is a great place to um, get kind of a 3,000 or 30,000 foot view. But if you want specific, if you want details, if you want to know current, most up to date information, they're going to go to you as the real estate professional and they're going to have you walk them through the Northwest MLS, correct? Yes, and I wanted to uh, let everyone know that even though I have to stay home, I am still actively working almost all day or half of the day. Like today, I had to do a comparable market analysis. I had to do phone calls, and I'm sure like Sean as well. So if you want to start looking at homes now and be ahead of everybody else, please feel free to contact me. Um, I can put my phone number up uh, and yeah, contact information for you at the end, but I think, yeah, and I can walk you through the MLS. I can share with you the virtual tours, all the photos, all the you can do that using a software like this, right? You can Correct. just have them virtually go on and you guys can have a meeting. And I think that's a great place to have a strategy session uh, right now during the stay at home time. Uh, people have the ability now to uh, sit back and really pinpoint what it is they're looking for in a home, whether it's a certain school district, a certain square footage. And you can also get some data, if I'm correct, on homes that have closed, correct? Correct. And that's the great thing, too, is I've lived here in Kitsap County for 24 years, and I know all the surrounding areas and having kids from 20s to high school to elementary. I know all the school districts and the schools very well. So I know I get a lot of military families that are not familiar with the area and they want to know, you know, which areas have the better school district, what's going on with this elementary, this junior high, this high school, certain areas um, surrounding the area. So all that information. So please take full advantage of my expertise. All right, we'll take a look at some of these other challenges and where the silver lining is on there. Uh, all right, so we mentioned that uh, there's also, or not being able to show homes in person. And we talked about how uh, you might be able to use that to your advantage because one, you can look at them through the Northwest MLS, which has the most current and up-to-date content. Uh, but you can also, you can also, um, take this time to gather information about the homes you are gonna be looking for, because again, most folks are putting their homes on the market in this March, April, May, June timeframe. So if they wanna be prepared, they can get their insight there, correct? Correct, 100%. Now we're talking about appraiser safety and uh, this is something, is it okay if I kind of jump in yes, on this? Yes, please, this is your expertise. All right. So on Jen's list of challenges has to do with appraiser safety. And, you know, above all else, we just want everybody to be safe. We don't want anybody to get contaminated with this stuff. Uh, it's, it, it is what it is. So that being said, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the ones who insure all of the mortgages, they put in place new appraisal guidelines. So in some cases on purchases, especially if you're having, or I believe it's if you have 5% down, all, I'll get all of the content. I'm sure I'm gonna put out a video on it. We just got updated on it about 24 hours ago too. But if you're putting down 5%, in some cases, they are allowing you to have a drive-by appraisal, which honestly has not happened since like 2008, you know, since the great crash. And obviously for different reasons we're doing it, I believe this is the right reason, but you now get to have what's known as a AVM, which if I'm remembering correctly, it's a automated value 
uh, module. So it's basically a computer generated appraisal um, instead of somebody going into the house. And then, like I said, uh, they can do an exterior only uh, um, of the home. So basically sellers and buyers don't have to worry about putting uh, the appraisers in danger. And I, I know that there are some appraisers right now, they're just concerned about going out to the house. Uh, FHA and VA to this moment have not put anything out. Um, so that's a very, very fluid situation, but I would expect them to probably follow suit. So right now, the challenge is appraisers don't want to get infected with COVID-19 and uh, buyers also don't want to get infected because you got to think about it. If you're, if you're just an objective third party, appraisers are constantly going into other people's homes. And, you know, as buyers, as sellers, think about how many people we come in contact with on a regular basis. So the fact that it's something that is uh, able to be transmitted through the air, it, it can it just everybody. So we want to be safe. And fortunately, the housing market um, and the appraisal panels are working with us. So having the uh, automated values uh, through computer generated appraisals and the exterior only appraisals are phenomenal. And whoever came up with that idea, way above my pay grade, but I definitely applaud you for thinking about the general public. All right, let's see. You had on your list as well. It's just coming up. Looks like a closing time for lenders. And then we can lump in signing documents with that as well. Yeah, and again, this is where I wanted to let everybody know, again, if you have not been pre-approved yet, do it now because it so affects your closing day and buying power. Okay. Yeah, I think when it comes to closing times for lenders, you know, the average closing time, I think throughout the industry has always been get the loan or, you know, close the home in less than 30 days. Okay. That's pretty much the industry standard. Some people you know, can do it faster. Some people do it a little slower, but really the bar is about 30 days for a close, right? Yeah, I always tell everybody it's 30 to 45 days. Right. So depending now, on their pre-approval. Now <laughs> you have the heightened, all right, the heightened closing times because of uh, the volume of refinances plus fewer bodies uh, uh, at the workplace. You know, people working from home and you don't always have all the same resources. So this is one place where I really want to chime in. Um, I've been on several wonderful, wonderful conference calls that are going out right now. And one of the numbers that keep getting thrown around is the mortgage industry in its one of its best years. We did three trillion dollars. OK, three trillion dollars in business. Right. So three trillion dollars. That's, that's all good, right? That we can handle that figure about 50% of purchases, 50% of refinances, okay? Mm -hmm. One and a half trillion each. All right, it's estimated with the recent rate drops that there were $11 trillion. That doesn't even shock eligible me. Eligible to refinance. Yeah, if you, to in, if you tried to punch it in in your calculator, it just come up E. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. zeros, it's ridiculous. But if you if you look at that, and you have that concept going through your mind, $11 trillion. Let's just say half the people decided we're going to refinance. We're going to take advantage. We're going to drop our rates in the low threes. We're going to take some cash out. We'll consolidate some debt. So, okay, so what's half of $11 million or $11 trillion? 5.5. Then you have the regular 1.5 trillion people who are going to buy a home this year. $1.5 trillion worth of home loans. You think about that. That's essentially more than double. That's about seven or it is. Sorry, wow. seven, seven trillion dollars worth of home loans that we're trying to squeeze through the housing industry. While not only are we able to handle it, or not only, you know, hopefully we're able to handle it, but we also have to handle this situation where everybody's workforce, you're working with the skeleton crew inside of the office. And then you have the other side where everybody's working from home and then maybe you have issues with appraisers. So I guess what I'm saying is you can definitely expect that there will be 
um, heightened closing times throughout the industry. So if you're watching this in Connecticut or Florida or Texas, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's still, you know, $7 trillion trying to make its way through the real estate industry with really a, a decimated <laughs> workforce uh, for the most part. So just uh, in other words, the closing times will be there. They will be present. And uh, there is a way that you can combat that. And that would be, uh, as Jen was alluding to, not just having a pre-approval letter. I don't recommend that, um, especially coming out of the gates. Uh, I recommend having a full approval. So what you can do is you can actually send in your mortgage documents uh, we can verify employment, we can verify assets, we can do all of that, have the underwriter actually look at your entire loan file, your entire financial portfolio, subject to having the actual house to purchase, and of course, subject to the appraisal. Then we're able to give you a letter, and what that does is it also shortens your closing date. So let's just say you find that house where buyer A has a pre-approval letter and they're going to take that 30, 45 to 60 day window because their loan hasn't gone through the underwriting process. You have buyer B who it took probably about a week to get it all through. Buyer B has a full on pre-approval or a full on approval letter. Everything's been verified through underwriting. They're fully approved. We know any conditions. We verified their funds, everything. Those folks are going to close in about 15 days. So if you're a seller, and you got buyer A and you got buyer B, which offer are you going to take? I think that's really important right now um, with homes getting bidding wars and having as much buyer power as you can. So again, if there was three offers and let's say one was a prequal, two were fully pre-approved, but one of them, because they have everything done, everything to the lender that he needs all the way through underwriting and can close in two weeks versus 30 to 45 days. And that seller is looking at making another mortgage payment. That offer is going to get the house. So you want right now as much buying power as you can. And that is huge. I mean, agents are also calling lenders right now to verify where they're at. So yeah. Use and this I, time. Exactly. So the last challenge that you had on your list was signing closing documents. And uh, I can tell you our, our partners over at uh, the title and escrow companies, they have been working their tails off. I've seen some of the most innovative stuff, <laughs> like just the emails and letters that are coming out, you know, that I would imagine uh, you have a comment on this, but the e-sign technology that's coming out at title and escrow is fantastic. It is huge. So now, um, again, even though the title reps cannot meet with you for notarizing, they can do e-signs right now where they do not have to meet with you in person and it's all done electronically and it's amazing. So imagine and that includes recordings because I yeah. just found that out. So if the courthouse closes, they still can do e-recordings, which is huge. Insane. So it's not going to cripple the housing market. We're all not going to be no. just relaxing. I mean, there will be home loans and purchases and refinances that continue to record um, throughout the stay at home. Correct? Correct. Excellent. Excellent. So as we kind of just dovetail um, towards the end here, as soon as it comes up, we'll talk about uh, oh, shit. Is it stuck. <laughs> All right. All right. Looks like it just got stuck there for a sec. And there we go. Talk about the three ways to get a competitive advantage. <laughs> so the number one way that I caught that you uh, had mentioned was, and, and I can take these three things and take it offline so we can see each other talk. Um, I will recap them for us. So uh, you talked about three different ways that people can kind of 
put their attention on the silver lining of everything and find a way to set themselves apart during the stay at home period and have a competitive advantage uh, once business gets back to normal, which we all do believe it's going to. So uh, the first thing is uh, Jen mentioned, know exactly what you're looking for. So this is a great time where you can have a video conference uh, with your preferred real estate professional, have them look on the Northwest MLS because as you're looking through Zillow there or, or Redfin or uh, you know whatever's out there, realtor.com, you might not have the most up-to-date information and you can get some more detail work. So if you're looking for something, maybe um, in, uh, I'll give them a name drop out here. There is a, a real estate agent uh, inside of uh, Silverdale, uh, Peter Broderick, and he had one of his listings. Uh, he was doing a Facebook Live on it and he mentioned how you know the house was going for $450,000 on Ridgetop, but they got a bidding war and it went well over asking price. So you might be looking at a house down the road and say, well, that house was listed for 450,000. So that's really my range. But is it, <laughs> is it really a range? Cause if you want that specific house in that neighborhood maybe you need to know the details of what the most recent sale looks like what the details were of that transaction so that you can make sure that you are gonna be making an offer in the ballpark because you don't want to show up as soon as the stay at home is done and say, all right, well, the next door neighbor to that house is selling their house and they're offering, call it 475,000. Well, I'm going to send in an offer for 450,000 because that's what the other house was listed for. What you don't know is how much the house actually sold for. And that's where, that's where having the conversation with, you know, a real estate professional like yourself you have that information on the Northwest MLS. You know what homes go for in that market and they can make a data-driven, educated decision, right? Correct. It's just, I can tell you that all the homes that I have listed um, recently, I would say in the last uh, month, six weeks, that, and we've done a fair market value. So we did not underlist. Mm -hmm. uh, all of them sold within days and yeah. um, all of them had bidding wars. I did yeah. not have one that did not. So it's just so important. And I think that's why, again, it's just kind of having the conversation also with your lender, being pre-approved because you need to know, I, I deal with buyers and they're like, I only want to spend this much and they'll tell the lender that and the lender will say this, but then they get into a bidding war and they need to go up and they really love that house. So I always say you want to know what your max is. That does not mean you need to spend your max, but which is only going to make your payment, you know, 70, 80 more dollars a month is going to get you that house. Like you're and, in it love also with. Gives us, and it also gives us time to strategize, like maybe paying your PMI off up front and saving yourself a couple of hundred dollars, et cetera. There's things that we can do during that time. But um, again, knowing what you want and having detailed research is really the first way that you can have a competitive advantage during the stay at home when it comes to real estate. The second way is strength and speed. And I think what we covered in that, as far as having strength and speed, having the strongest offer possible, meaning virtually having a home loan that's as good as cash, meaning there's no contingencies, your loan has been fully approved, there's no red flags, there's no way the financing could fall out. Having that full on approval letter versus a pre-approval letter is something you can definitely do during the stay at home time. And that is where I come into the picture and I'm more than happy to help. And then when it comes to the speed part, that's where Jen comes in and says, hey, look, Mr. Seller, my buyer has a full approval letter, not a pre-approval letter, a full approval letter. We can close in 15 days versus this buyer over here or whatever the other competitive offers are. And they're gonna take about 45 to 60 days because that's what about most lenders are working with because they have a skeleton work crew over at the office. They have um, you know a ton of refinances. Uh, so those other buyers, they're gonna take about 45 to 60 days to close, but this guy's all ready to go. He needs 15 days, accept this offer. You know, If you're a seller and you're selling something, I know which one I'm choosing. 
<laughs> all right? So the strength comes from my positioning, just making sure you have a strong, full, approvable or approved loan uh, before you have a purchase and sale or appraisal. And the speed comes from Jen, who will write up a quick close on there and then give you the ability to structure your offer with time. Uh, lastly is be prepared to win. I think the thing that you conveyed the most is we have a strong, strong housing market. Like before COVID-19, guess what? Homes were already getting multiple offers. Values were rising. Um, interest rates were low. So people could afford more house than they would have even three months ago, six months ago. You know, because of all of that, and most of the time, uh, a majority of listings come out in that March, April, May timeframe. And that's what we're going to be dead smack in the middle of after the 14 day stay at home uh, gets to be done. Because of all of that, you got to be prepared that as soon as those homes start to come on the market, as soon as, you know, the stay at home is over and done with, if you're looking for a house, you need to be ready to put in that offer. You need to be ready that it's bulletproof. And I think the great thing is too, is uh, it's not common knowledge, but uh, it should be <laughs> a approval. So a full loan approval is good for 90 days. Okay. So it's not 30 days. It's good for three that's months. That's really important. I get asked that question a lot. Yeah, People how are long? like, should I wait until I find the home? Is it going to expire? Is there going to be fees? And it's it's actually 90 days from the date that we pull the credit report. Okay, so if you do your online application and you select to go ahead and pull credit, you know, 90 days from that day is when the approval will be done. Because once your credit report expires, we have to re-pull credit, which is why the approval letter um, is no longer valid. So with that being said, and also the volatility of interest rates, you know, the nice thing is if you have a, a shorter closing time, you know, what we're going to be able to do is we have a tighter window that we're going to be able to look at interest rates. So we want to be able to lock your loan uh, as the timing gets right in the market, because we're seeing some huge, huge swings with what the Fed's doing. So again, just to recap, uh, when the stay at home is in place right now. Um, set aside some time to know exactly what you want, have some detailed research, um, utilizing Jen and the Northwest MLS um, so that she gets to know exactly what type of home you're looking for and in the area, strength and speed. You wanna make sure uh, that you have a full approval letter and you have uh, flexibility on when you can close because that's gonna set your offer apart uh, from other people who have competing offers who maybe haven't gone through the full approval process or even a cash buyer potentially. You know, if somebody put in a cash offer, let's just say it's a $300,000 house, you put an offer in at 350, they put a cash offer in at 320. Well, you both can close in 15 days, <laughs> okay? And your offer just happens to be positioned better financially the seller is not going to have as much reluctance to go with you versus the cash offer, which we are seeing more because of the Seattle money coming over to the Kitsap side. Um, and then last but not least, be prepared to win. And that means as soon as things are done, you have all your ducks in a row to where you can look at the new houses that are coming on the market and pick your shot, pick the homes you want to go to um, because you are fully approved. You have all your resources, you know exactly what you want and you're just prepared to win. So uh, Jen, anything else you want to add? Yeah, thank you, Sean. Um, I just wanted again, let you know that when this fold is over, there's going to be a lot of homes going on the market and all the buyers are coming back out. So be ahead of the game, be ahead of everybody else. Do not wait, get a pre-approved now, be ahead of the game, have stronger wow, buying power. Now. Be fully approved, not pre-approved. We want them fully be approved. Be fully approved. <laughs> and you know what, again, I have people calling me now, they're looking at a house, they're interested in it, they want it before it sells and they're worried about this two weeks. So that's why it's important. Call me, private message me, email me. I can help you find exactly what you're looking for so we can mark those as favorites. So the day that this is over, we can get out there immediately and get you the house you want. 
before everybody starts coming out. That's fantastic. Thank you for joining us. All right, Jen. Well, I know um, I'll be promoting your home buyer class as soon as that starts up again. I know it's usually the third um, Saturday of every month at the Fort Orchard Windermere office. Uh, we'll definitely put your contact information uh, inside of the uh, comments here, and I'm going to put it up uh, one more time on the screen at the very end of this when we sign off. Um, but I can't thank you enough for your time today and your willingness to share your industry knowledge. Thank you, Sean, and the same to you. All right, okay, I'm gonna put that up on the screen uh, one more time, folks, so you guys can see her contact info. And if you have any, any questions about real estate, um, I definitely recommend uh, you go ahead and you call Jen. So Jen, without further ado, I will uh, see you soon. All right. Thank you, Sean. Bye, everybody. Stay safe and call right, me. <laughs> Bye.